Hi everyone, my name is Ravana and I'm a tutor here at Chegg and today I'll be discussing tragedy as a literary genre. So when looking at the meaning of the word tragedy as it applies to literature, um, the main concept of tragedy deals with human suffering. So this is stories that tell about death and destruction and sadness and illness and he, uh, talk about the human experience with those um, situations. Typically it deals with the decline of the protagonist, so the main character, hero, whatever it may be, um, falling from a, a pedestal of some sort, whether it be good or bad, um, even farther into destruction. And usually this is supposed to produce a um, cathartic reaction in an audience. So this is when, uh, as a reader, or in cases of plays as a, um, a viewer, you witness a, um, you witness this event and you feel pity or fear or you have some sort of human reaction to what's being shown to you, but by the end of it you have this sort of feeling of relief um, or peace with the events that have occurred. Um, where tragedy is considered as a literary genre, there are three main um, points in history where tragedy is the main literary genre of the time. Uh, you have when the ancient Greeks produced the works, Shakespeare, and modern tragedy. So first we're going to take a look at the ancient Greeks and how they um, developed the idea of tragedy. So at this point in time you have three main tragic writers, Sophocles, Euripides, and Homer. So Sophocles writes Oedipus Rex and this deals with a the story of a man who um, is first off abandoned by his, his birth family and in turn is raised by a non-natural family. Um, the reason behind this, this abandonment is because his father and mother are told of this prophecy that if um, Oedipus reaches uh, adulthood that he will kill his father. So his father sends him away. But ultimately after Oedipus grows up, um, he does in, um, in fact kill his father and ends up marrying his own mother. And so this, this story that's supposed to start off as this, um, this character raising his standing um, from a peasant to king ends up finding out that he's completely destroyed himself and everybody else around him. Um, in Euripides' Medea, um, you see a, a woman whose husband has become unfaithful to her. And this was due to the fact that the marriage, his marriage to another woman would be more advantageous to his marriage already to his wife. And you have a woman who is going to great lengths to make this man suffer. And so in turn, she makes herself suffer uh, many consequences to so the, the loss of her children, um, committing murder, um, having wasted all this time um, on a man who never really appeared to have loved her. Um, so while the first two really deal completely in tragedy, Homer's The Odyssey is a bit different. Um, the Odyssey is actually considered more towards the genre of an epic meaning that it is a, a lengthy tale that tells of, a, of an adventure and it's supposed to be a little bit more thought out and fleshed out and, and big. And so the tragic elements in Homer is that it tells the story of a man who has to go through several trials to be able to reach his end goal of being back with his family after having suffered um, the suffered through the Trojan War and then having to spend years and years and years and years trying to get back home 
because he's angered the gods by his decision to go to Troy in the first place. Um, so those are the basic starts to what great, what, what tragedy is as a genre. Um, so you have every character in this, um, suffers some sort of loss and the suffering is usually the suffering of everyday people. And so this is where the tragedy genre starts to take form. And this is where you have people believing that anybody can have these things happen to them. And that's where we feel that cathartic reaction. Now, when looking at Shakespeare, you have, he has many, uh, many plays that are centered on a tragic, um, a tragic genre. Uh, but three of his main ones are Hamlet, Othello, and Macbeth. Now, the, f the weird thing about this is that all of the characters are so named, and it's also the title of the, the work that they appear in, um, but every single character that appears in these three plays suffers in some way or another. So there is not one character in any of these plays that goes unscathed by something um, that could be quite human. Um, in Hamlet, you have a prince who has recently discovered that his father was murdered. And in order for him to deal with this fact, he starts to lose touch with reality a little bit because he's doing everything he can to find the person that killed his father. And so, a little by little, he destroys the people around him, whether good or bad, and eventually leads to his own destruction. Um, Othello is, tells a story of a man who um, has worked his, soul, his whole life um, to gain pride and um, prestige for himself that for him these are his two most important qualities and when he decides to get married and falls in love he easily finds himself becoming jealous and feeling betrayed because the people around him uh, bring out this jealousy in him um, and eventually it causes a, a mountain of characters to be killed all because he felt um, as if he had been betrayed by everybody that was close to him. Um, in the case of Macbeth, you have a character who, um, who in the beginning really isn't a bad guy. He's not seeking out uh, destructive behavior, and he's not suffering. But with a simple turn of events, like an introduction of the three witches who tell him that he's going to be king, this moment, this prophecy moment, totally derails him as a human being. Because he's been told that this is what's going to happen, he does almost anything to make sure that it is achieved. And this goes against all of his morals as a human being beforehand. And so by the end of it, he ends up killing, you know, once again, killing everybody around him whether he did it personally or not, you know, he, he ends up killing all the people that matter the most to him. And so by the end, he doesn't have anything to go back to. And so in all of this, he's completely destroyed any semblance of being a human being. Now, while these, um, these two areas of the Greek and Shakespeare are probably the two that have the most um, connection to the traditional tragic genre. More modern tragedy kind of, it, it finds new ways of making events that we see as tragic become um, a little bit more stylized. Um, in The Death of a Salesman, you have a character who 
um, has spent his whole life doing one thing. And he's put all of his time and money into making sure that his children don't um, follow in his path. Um, but unfortunately, through some bad decisions and um, his lack of understanding what his own children wanted to do with their lives, he destroys um, his son's lives. He causes um, a huge rift to become between every single member of the family. Um, and by the end of the play, nobody wants to, to be around him. He's alienated everybody else around him. And, you know, as he discovers more and more about the reasons behind why his children want nothing to do with him, um, it eventually leads him to a little bit of um, self-destructive behavior. Um, in a doll's house, you have a situation where the character um, is pretty much living a very normal, everyday life. And she, at some point, made a very terrible decision in that she forged a document. And she forged this document with good intentions, as her husband was ill and they needed money to, to pay for his treatment. Well, her husband, not knowing about this this forgery, um, actually ends up reprimanding a co-worker for the same or same or similar um, misgiving. And so in fear of him finding out, she does just, just about anything to keep him from finding out. And then once he does find out, she, she realizes that um, the he is more concerned about the fact that her misdeed could damage his career than the fact that she did so to save his life, which to her is the moment that she's realized that her life really has no meaning. And so she has to leave the situation in the only way that she knows how in order to end this madness, in a way. Um, Test of the Duberville's is probably one of the only, um, the only works written in the last 200 years that really displays the typical idea of tragedy as it applies to Greek and um, Shakespearean literature. Um, Tessa de Rills tells the story of a poor woman who unknowingly um, is told that her family name um, at one point was um, a high society name. And that because of that, of this, she, uh, this leads her to lie about her own social standing and um, and it also leads her into the path of several dubious um, male characters who in one way or another um, destroy her as a person um, you have uh, the man who takes what he wants from her and leaves her a, a young mother who then has to bury her child because the child is born premature. You have a man who comes along and discovers the fact that, um, marries her and then discovers that she's had a child before out of wedlock and abandons her. And then both of these men eventually, um, become reattached to her as, um, their partner but in the end she she does all she can to right all the wrongs that have been done to her and to others um, leading to her own eventual destruction as a human being and the the point I think about tragic writing is that you are trying to develop the idea that your life could always be worse. And so that's why a lot of us, um, 
us readers like to read stories such as these because it makes us think about the fact that the situations that we have in our own lives could always be a lot worse. And I think that in the audience having such a cathartic reaction to these works, it makes us feel a little bit more human in the end.